Police accused of framing a Detroit man for murdering children. So damn shame, put it up full mass. This story is going to make your blood boil. A Detroit man says police knowingly manipulated witness statements to frame him for the murder of a baby and a 10 year old child. Kenneth Nixon was sentenced to spend life in prison after he was found guilty in 2005 of killing a one year old and a 10 year old in a house fire in Detroit. He was only 18 at the time. He even told the judge during the sentencing that he was, and I quote, about to sentence an innocent man to prison. He was only 18, he was a child. After the Cooley Law Innocence Project partnered with the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office, this is their Office of Conviction Integrity, to reopen an investigation into his case in 2021. A judge dismissed his charges and vacated his sentence once it was discovered that he did in fact receive an unfair trial, was likely innocent of all charges. Well, now Nixon is suing the city and the city police for their part in fabricating evidence against him, using individuals to frame him for arson and murder. During his trial, authorities relied on the testimony of the 13 year old sibling of the two children killed in that fire. The teen told jurors that Nixon was at the scene of the crime, but he gave conflicting accounts of what happened that night, including where he was in the house. And if he saw Nixon throw a Molotov cocktail at the home. Additionally, in exchange for leniency, a jail informant told investigators that Nixon admitted to the arson, even though the informant only saw news coverage of the case. Nixon's girlfriend was even with him the entire night, but reportedly could not testify as a co-defendant. The boyfriend of the mother whose children died and Nixon's girlfriend once had an affair and the children's family believed Nixon started the fire out of revenge. These are all circumstantial dynamics and not evidence to prove anything. The judge who vacated the sentence said the 13 year old's testimony, the statements and testimony by this key witness were inconsistent to support what is basically the sole identification of one Mr. Nixon. In his lawsuit obtained by Atlanta Black Star, Nixon claims that the detectives who investigated the incident knowingly manipulated and then relied on obviously coach false evidence from the 13 year old brother of the two of two of the victims to arrest Mr. Nixon. The suit also alleges that the officers coerced a jailhouse informant to give fabricated testimony and then deliberately concealed from both the prosecution on and defense the, uh, and defense the manner in which that false evidence was created. Nixon also passed the polygraph test according to the suit. But investigators lied and said he failed it. Let's put up a picture of Mr. Nixon. Uh, Dear brother, I hope that you receive all of the blessings that should come your way. Um, He's suing because when there is no vigor from the state to investigate all of the fallacies that you have been presented with, the only way to get these individuals under oath is through civil, civil court. So you have to sue them. This is a way to get not only the officers involved on the record, but also the witnesses they coerced to tell the truth (laughs) about what happened. More evidence will be presented as to the innocence of this one man whom officers attempted, well, successfully framed for a period of time. Sharing thoughts on this. You keep talking about these reported crimes by people in uniform. These are crimes. I wish that they could be found out and anybody who did what you describe must take his place. I don't even want there to be jails, but there's got to be some retribution here. I wanna know the statute of limitations, okay? Because this is ridiculous. 
And there's one other thing, Dr. Ritchie, in the references there, the prosecutors were skeptical of the testimonies at the time. You don't have to go through with it, you know. You don't have to prosecute, you have discretion. We hear about that all the time, like the woman who blew a mother away over an iPad, hurling racist language through the door. Yep. Uh, Prosecutors have significant authority, significant power. And when you become a prosecutor, it's fascinating. You literally swear to do one thing, not to prosecute, not to win cases, not to charge, not to do grand juries. You swear to do one thing, to uphold and seek justice. But if you go to any prosecutorial office in this country, the star prosecutors are the ones who get the most convictions, not the ones who obtain the most justice. All right.